Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. Men's Health Magazine, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Dorena Newton with Men's Health Magazine. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Glad to be joining you today for a little bit. Great. Are we ready to go? Yeah, we're all set. Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, I, you know, I can't see you. Is that that's I, I should I shouldn't have a picture, right? Oh, I see you now. Uh, I think you should see me, but uh, <laughs> oh, see yeah, there we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Hi. Look, we match. We're both in blue. Fantastic. So great to meet you. Um, so Shane, do you mind? I'm Dorena Newton from Men's Health Magazine. Do you, we're here to talk to you about your gym and, and your diet and your fridge up there on the space station. Do you mind just for our audience giving us your full name, telling us where you are and telling us that you're going to show us your gym and fridge on the station, please? Okay, my full name, Robert Shane Kimbrough. Um, currently, I'm in the Japanese experimental module. We call it the GEM, J-E-M. Uh, and it's a really beautiful big module here that we do a lot of science and research in. Um, our fridge and our, our, all of our eating and nutrition, everything is, is in another module called Node 1. And uh, our workout equipment, our, our, JY, our GYM, our gym, with our uh, workout machine and treadmill is in a module called Node 3. And then our bike that we ride for cardio is in the U United States Laboratory. Awesome. And we've been lucky enough to already see some of that footage and uh, experience uh, how you work out, which is extraordinary. So I'm going to ask you some questions based on some of the stuff that I've already seen. So my first question to you is, what food do you miss the most um, from uh, back at home on, the, on Earth? Yeah, so it's it's kind of fun. We, a lot of our food up here is very soft. It's kind of comes in bags and things. And so what I miss, and I think a lot of my colleagues miss, are just crunchy things. So um, for me, that's a salad, like a good fresh salad. We don't get a lot of fresh vegetables and fruits up here. We do every now and then, but not very often. So I really miss salads. Um, and I do miss things like pizza and ice cream and other things like that as well. Um, tell us one thing that you're absolutely sick of eating up there. Well, I don't think I've gotten to that point yet. We've been here almost four months. Uh, our variety is actually pretty good. And what you don't want is just the same thing over and over, even though um, before you fly, you don't think it's that big a deal. But once you get up here and you're up here for a long duration stint, um, you definitely want variety. So we're, our crew is very fortunate, honestly. We have crew members from the United States, obviously. We have crew members from France, from Japan, and from Russia. And so we get to share in all those other countries' cuisines as well. So that keeps it fresh and keeps the variety um, pretty nice for us. I really haven't gotten sick of anything yet. Um, how much food do they have on, on board the space station at once and do they restock? Yeah, we did. they definitely restock and they actually plan ahead and do really well. So we had a cargo spacecraft show up here last week and it brought food for not our crew, but for the next crew. So they, I would say they stock ahead about six months in advance. And so by the time when we showed up here in April, all of our food was already here on board for the six month mission that we're gonna be here. Now we'll get a few things here and there, like we get care packages from our families that have some food items in them sometimes when these vehicles show up. And also we'll get a bag of fresh fruit um, like we did last week, which is very nice. We got some apples and some kiwis, even some uh, cheese and things like that, which you normally don't get up here on the space station. So that was really welcome. Um, that was my next question. Um, do you guys ever have cheat meals up there? Like, you know, what's the pizza for you when you're up there and you want to like splash out on the diet? Yeah, I tell you, our food's pretty healthy. I think for us in general, 
the the cheat food is the Russian food because it's full of salt and fat and things that, that the U.S. food doesn't generally have in it. So we enjoy usually once a week on Friday or Saturday nights we'll have Russian food with our cosmonaut crewmates, and uh, we really enjoy that. Uh, now, having said that, on that that spacecraft I mentioned that showed up last week. Uh, showed up some pizza kits uh, for the first time at least for anyone up here we had pizzas on board so we had a nice crust and you had sauce and cheese real cheese and pepperonis and sun-dried tomatoes that you could add to it and we had a great time together as a whole crew having pizza night last saturday amazing now um when you do pizza night are you guys is, are you allowed any alcohol on board are there any beers or is that like not done up up there No, we're not allowed to have that up here. So uh, we'll have to wait till we get back home for that. Awesome. Okay. So my next question is, do you have any specific idea of how many calories you burn versus how much you need to maintain the muscle while you're up there? Pretty scientific question. Yeah, our, uh, we got an incredible staff back in uh, Houston and then for the other crew members around the world uh, that really monitor our intake and then, you know, how much we're burning every day with our workouts. Um, I don't have the exact number that we're burning, but I know the target I'm supposed to hit on the intake every day is about 2,400 calories. So um, that to me sometimes is hard to do, uh, but I know we're burning about that, that many calories. I don't have the data on that. I know our folks on the ground probably do, but our workouts are very hard every day, about two hours a day, an hour of cardio, and then an hour of uh, resistive exercises for our weightlifting. Uh, and that I think balances out to about 2,400 calories. And we know that because we do um, have a weighing system up here, a mass measurement system that we do once a month. And you can tell if you're losing or gaining weight. And most of us up here, and for me this time, I'm staying nice and steady every month we've done it so far. So I think the intake and the outtake are about the same. What's the most challenging? Is it, um, do you tend to lose weight more quickly or gain weight more quickly when you're there? What, what's the challenge? Uh, typically you would, you would definitely lose weight up here just because in general you don't drink as much and you're just, you, know, you don't eat as much unless you're kind of, I won't say forced to, but on a strict protocol and regimen and you know why you're doing it. So uh, for me, on my last flight, they had me targeted to get 3,000 calories a day and I couldn't get there. I just honestly couldn't do it. It was too much. Um, and so we, I kind of settled out around 23 to 2,500 on my last flight just because that was – even I was pushing to get to that. And, uh, and by doing that, I showed, you know, no weight loss. Uh, on my very first flight, which was only a couple weeks long, um, I lost about 10 pounds. So that was not good, but it was a short duration. It's not as critical as for these long duration missions. So, you know, over time, our, our doctors and scientists on the ground have really learned a really nice protocol um, in order to keep our weight up and our nutrition up. And all that does is it helps our bone density and our bone mass uh, along with our strength maintaining that. So it's very critical that we do it, especially for these long duration flights. So follow up question, you know, with, with all that caloric intake, do you enjoy your meals or are you more just kind of eating because you have to? Now, I think we all enjoy eating and, and our bodies are just used to it now. I would say the first week or so, yeah, you're, you're kind of forcing it because you know you need to get those calories going. But once you get in a, in a rhythm and a routine like most, most people do, then it's, uh, it's kind of hard to break. Does your um, hunger clock get messed up because of the lack of a firm day-night structure? Uh, actually, we're on a pretty good day-night structure. Now, we don't have windows everywhere where you can look out and see if it's light out or dark out. Uh, but we usually get up generally, we're on Greenwich Mean Time, and so we get up around 6 a.m. every day and go to bed about 10 p.m. every day. And so your meals are usually you know, around 6.30, 7 a.m. for breakfast. Uh, and our, we're scheduled for lunch, and it just depends on the day, but anywhere from, from 12 to 2 p.m., your lunch will be scheduled in there. And then we'll eat usually about 7.30 p.m. for dinner. Um, and snacks in between whenever you want. And most of us have to, I have to have snacks in between breakfast and lunch and lunch and dinner in order to get my calorie count correct every day. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go in and talk about a little bit about exercise. Um, is there something you do in space, like a, an exercise you do up there that you just could never pull off back down on Earth? 
Well, I'll, well, yeah, because the machine that we work out on is is a floating machine. I'll call it that. It's an isolation system, so it's actually floating while you're working out. Um, the stationary bike, I'll call it stationary, but it's not stationary. It moves as well because it's floating while you're riding on it. So those are things you definitely can't do back on Earth. The uh, the bike is really interesting because it's actually a great ab workout, just staying, uh, just keeping yourself on the bike for one. And then you know once you're working the protocols, you're getting a great workout in and keeping your cardiovascular health. Uh, intact. Um, is the how often do you go outside the station? Do you go outside the station? Correct. Yeah, some of us get a chance to go do spacewalks. I think that's what you're talking about. Um, myself and Thomas Pesquet, a French astronaut, we went out three times in June to do spacewalks to install new solar arrays. Um, and that was, that was really neat to be a part of that huge program that a lot, a lot of people have been working for many years to make that happen. Uh, actually, next week, uh, two of our colleagues, Mark Vanda High and Aki Hoshide, are going to go outside to set up the stage for the next solar arrays that are going to come up uh, in about a year. So they're going to go do a spacewalk next Tuesday. So hopefully you can follow that. Um, is that more physically taxing, moving around outside, than it is um, inside the, the station? Absolutely, yeah. You're wearing a, you know, the big white spacesuits you've probably seen pictures of. They generally weigh about 300 pounds. Now they don't weigh anything in space, of course, but it's still a mass you have to control, and it's pressurized. So we kind of get blown up like a balloon, and then so every time you're opening and closing your hands to do work, it actually takes work to do that. And so six to seven hours are what spacewalks normally last. And so by the time you get back in, you are physically exhausted and mentally exhausted. It sounds like it. So my next question is, um, what's the one exercise then you have to do up there um, that you really don't like doing, that you're forced to do, you know, to keep in shape? Yeah, we, you know, I really normally love working out in the gym. I love doing things, but we do so many repetitions um, of squats and deadlifts. Um, so those are, even though I like squats, I think single leg squats are my least favorite up here. Um, we're doing a lot of reps of those as well. Uh, you know, every third day or so we'll get those. And those are, those are challenging for me. And uh, those, are, those are ones I just have to grunt through and get through the workout that day. I'm going to say I interview a lot of celebrities and, and people and incredible shape and nobody likes squats. So <laughs> you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, so my next question to you is, um, what other kinds of training um, do you do really on Earth before you go up there that really sets you up to be to be in, in maximum shape? Well, we all have a personal trainer um, at NASA, uh, the NASA astronauts do, that really get us ready to go fly in space. Now, we, we have a machine like just like we have up here in Houston that we can train on for one, so that gets us ready to go. We learn the machine. It's, it's pretty complicated um, when you first look at it, so they take us through that, make sure we understand what's going on there. Uh, and then it's really a personal decision whether you want to really work hard to get in shape for space flight or not. Uh, I think most of us do work out in general, um, cardio and weightlifting back on Earth. And so that just gets us ready to go. And we want to be healthy, of course, and especially when you're going for these six to seven to, you know, or more month missions, you want to make sure you're healthy so that uh, you can be a contributor to the team while you're up here for one and you don't have any health issues for two. Do you um, ever work out with anyone else up there or do you mainly work out solo? Yeah, all the machines are solo, so uh, you can't really work out with anyone. Now, there's sometimes people, the treadmill is very close to the workout machine, so you're, you know, within 10 feet or so of that person when you have two people going at the same time. But other than that, all the machines are, are one person only. Um, how do you keep your mind fit up there? Uh, we have a lot of ways to do that, and everybody can probably answer it differently. Um, so in, the de in our downtime, people do different things. A lot of us like uh, taking pictures of Earth, so we have some pretty incredible cameras up here and some great windows to look out of to see our incredible planet and just make sure we, you know, that's become a hobby of mine is taking pictures, so that's been really neat to uh, kind of just, you know, step away a little bit. Um, people can also, people also read, uh, can watch TV shows, movies, and things like that. We have one 
live TV channel that can be streamed up here. So I'm a big sports fan. So typically on the weekends, I'll want to watch some sports. So we'll ask Mission Control to send up whatever game happens to be on um, to enjoy. Fantastic. Um, did you guys all watch the Olympics together? Uh, we watched a lot of Olympics. Yeah, we had that streaming the entire two weeks, I think. And that was pretty pretty special, honestly, to be up here, especially with so many different nationalities represented up here. And I don't know if you saw it, but we actually did an, a Space Olympics that was posted, I think, about a week ago. It's pretty funny to see some of the events that we created, um, and they kind of mimic some of the events on Earth. Awesome. Okay, so that's kind of the end of some of my main questions. What we always do in this uh, segment is we do a rapid fire set of questions um, and they're kind of funny questions and I'm going to ask them to you and they might feel a little left of center, but here we go. Um, if you have to choose between these two, a black hole or a supernova? Supernova. Um, Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars. Lift off or touchdown? Lift off. Visit the moon or visit Mars? Visit the moon. If you had to explore space with any sci-fi character, real or fake, who would it be? Oh, I think I'll have to go with Matt Damon from his performance in The Martian. Awesome, awesome answer. Okay, and then um, just a couple more questions. Do you guys listen to music out there? Yeah, we have a great, uh, we can, you know, access whatever music you have back home with, um, you know, the different platforms there. And uh, we also have a system that gets uh, kind of loaded up before we come in space. You just give um, some people in Houston for, in our case, our preferences, and they load up our computers. So we have all kind of music we can listen to. And usually that's what we do when we're working out. We'll either add music on or watching a TV show um, during our, especially during my long runs and long bike rides, I'll have a TV show or a movie up. What's your favorite song on your playlist when you're working out? I don't think I have a favorite song, I, and I listen to lots of different kinds of music. So um, whether it's, um, you know, U2 is one of my favorite bands, so I'll probably have to say some U2 songs. Awesome. Okay, and then so just to wrap it up, will you just give us a quick overview? How long did it take you to get up? Um, up to the station, how long are you guys up there for and how long will it take you to return? Sure, yeah, so we flew on the new SpaceX Dragon vehicle called Endeavour, uh, the second operational flight of that vehicle. And so it's, we took off on April 23rd um, and about nine minutes after we took off, we were in space. So incredible accelerations, of course, during the launch. Uh, it took us a little over or a little under a day, about 23 hours to get to the space station. And so we had a little kind of sleep period on the Dragon while we were getting here. And then 23 hours after liftoff, we showed up at the space station, we docked here. And after a few hours of pressures equalizing, we got to open the hatches and come join our crewmates that were on board. Uh, and then we're up here for a little over six months. It looks like about six and a half months. And then we'll come home late October, early November is the plan right now. And uh, we'll land somewhere off the coast of Florida is the plan. Could be east coast or west coast, depending on the weather that day. Awesome. Um, great. And so finally, I think we have about one minute left. Like, how do you stay motivated just to stay fit and healthy when you're up there? What's your biggest motivation? Uh, I've always kind of, you know, ever since I was probably went to 20 or so when I went to college, I really got into fitness. And so for me, it's just a personal thing. I want to keep my body in the best shape it can be so I can uh, hopefully live a long and productive and healthy life. Awesome. Okay. So I think we have about 30 seconds left. We always end this by saying, see you guys later. I've got to get on with working, you know, doing my work, you know, thanks. Thanks for watching. Would you mind just giving us a line like that? Tell us what you're going to go do next. 
Okay. Yeah. Hey, it's been great chatting with you. Um, had a great time today. I'm off to, I'm not sure what my next activity is, but Mission Control has something scheduled for me, I'm sure. And uh, we're going to go, I'm going to go join my other crewmates as we get the station ready to go. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event. And thank you to all participants from Men's Health Magazine Station. We're now resuming operational comms.